Christine, also known as Trami internationally, continues to strengthen today and is likely going to be making landfall as a typhoon in northeastern Luzon in the Philippines. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. Let's break down the forecast of this storm system as we go ahead over the next several days as it crosses the Philippines and eventually even heads out towards places like Hainan over towards Vietnam. In this update, we're also going to talk about why this is happening. So not just the direct impacts, but what's going on in the atmosphere. And the key thing is at this time, a lot of moisture. You see the satellite picture. We have inflow all the way down towards the south. So I've been seeing people saying, well, whew. Thankfully, the center line of this storm system is passing towards my north and it's going to be heading out towards northeastern Luzon. But the reality is you have all that inflow across parts of Isaias over towards Mindanao and even into the Cebu area. You're going to be looking at heavy rainfall well away from that center of circulation. And in fact, as well, with the Amihan set up here that is going to help increase the overall wind field here with this semicircle right here. You can see that there and down towards the south indicating the extent of the tropical storm strength winds. So even into Manila, you may not be seeing those destructive inner core of this storm system, but it's a wide, almost donut shaped storm with the winds extending well away from that low level center. Thus, tropical storm strength conditions could be even felt as far south as Legaspi across the NCR and plenty of rainfall and inflow wrapping in on the southern extent of that. Once again, though, this is the latest forecast from Pagani. So that's a Philippine Meteorological Agency showing that low level center cross over into Isabella Cagayan area. I think it's probably going to make landfall a little bit further towards the south into Isabella crossing across region two in the Cagayan Valley and then moving right over Baguio before exiting the Philippines as we go ahead through our Thursday and then mainly into Friday and heading off there towards the West Philippine Sea. As far as the start of the onset of those winds there though across the east coast already could be seeing that here by your Tuesday afternoon into the evening even into Manila by Wednesday morning you're going to begin to see that inflow in those tropical storm strength gusts upwards of 60 to 70 kilometers per hour the real show won't be arriving until about wednesday night though into thursday but if you have any plans to kind of prepare your yard or just make sure you know things are tied down a little bit ahead of this storm system tuesday here is the time to do it because as we go ahead to tuesday night into wednesday those conditions are going to be going downhill but even out ahead of that today and then even over toward tuesday and the wednesday we're already seeing that rainfall and inflow impact southeastern luzon so already the shower is beginning to impact here and that is going to really continue to pick up through our day on wednesday heading into thursday heaviest of course across the sierra madre mountains where some areas could see as much as two 300, maybe even 400 millimeters of total precipitation. So these areas in the red, including the Bicol region in, into Isabella, Quezon, Samar, Cagayan, Aurora, all going to be looking at that chance of some flooding rainfall, even a chance of some landslides in some of the higher elevations. So make sure you are staying weather aware. You're watching this video, but do remember I am not an official source. Some of your official sources are here, uh, including Bahasa JMA, Taiwan, HKO, and JTWC, which is a lot further south. And one reason, you know, they're kind of agreeing what I'm seeing here, that southerly track likely pushing the storm system right over Isabella versus Cagayan province. So I do expect a lot of the agencies to kind of match up with what JTWC is putting out. You can even see that here with a consensus from weathernerds.org. This is the ECMWF ensemble versus the GFS ensemble, both kind of indicating that little more southerly track. Before yeah, the arrival of this storm, I do want you to remember this. Know your information through those official sources. That is the key thing. I am not an official source and I can't always put out these updates but make sure you check in with Bogasa. They've actually been doing a pretty good job. I know a lot of people put hate on them, but I think they've been doing fantastic with warning on these systems as of late. So always trying my best to keep you posted, but make sure you check in with them and your local warning agencies for evacuations. All right, another look at the satellite imagery. You can already see that convection moving out here towards Captain Duanas, even down towards uh, Cebu. You have that inflow wrapping it around. Heavy rainfall warnings in place for even western areas of Mindanao and over towards Manila. 
Don't be surprised if you see at least tropical storm strength conditions in the NCR. Guidance does push this off towards the west northwest, though, with that landfall around Isabella. But then we watch this kind of cross over the Cagayan Valley, see how the mountains disrupt it. We could be looking at blustery conditions as we go ahead to Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Some of the worst of the weather across Luzon overnight, unfortunately. Uh, into Baguio and even on the west coast as that inflow wraps around impacting places like Pangan Sinan all the way down here towards Manila as those winds kind of kick on through. And then we can follow our storm system as it marches off here towards the west and by the weekend, Saturday over towards Sunday, passing over Hanan and maybe into Vietnam as a strong typhoon. Now this could not be a, a, a repeat of our last storm system that did something very similar to this, but still a dangerous storm nonetheless. So here's a little bit of a closer look. The entire island of Luzon is going to get in on this, but like I mentioned, it's all about the wind field with this and how large it is. And I called it a donut shape, and I think this next graphic coming up here really shows what I'm talking about. But that low-level center is still not terribly tight. You almost got a, kind of, uh, got a monsoonal gyre type setup with this, with those tropical storm strength winds extending well away from the low-level center of circulation. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of impacts here as this crosses over. So I think you, we pay always attention to that center line naturally because sometimes that's the core is where you have the damaging winds. But also I want you to pay an extent of the overall size of the storm and how far those winds do extend out. So even if you're in Manila or even down here towards Visayas, you're still gonna see that inflow with plenty of rainfall associated with it too. Heaviest, of course, in the north, but that inflow is still going to be impacting western areas of Asias as this pushes on through. And even out towards eastern Taiwan, you're going to be looking at some uh, moisture kind of kicking up into the mountains there on top of that. So a wide range of impacts. Hopefully everybody you know is staying smart and staying safe during this storm system as we continue to track it over the next several days. Of course, Wednesday, things are going to go downhill. Wednesday night into Thursday. That's the worst of the weather and hopefully by the weekend conditions do improve. We're also monitoring those signal force warnings but I do want to remind you watch out for these rainfall warnings too. Even far away from that low level center you might not be under signal force warnings but you might be under those red level rainfall warnings which of course can cause some serious flooding which often is kind of the deadlier aspect of a lot of tropical systems outside of a few exceptions like of course Yolanda. Most of the time it's the rain and the flooding that caused the deaths and the dangerous situations here. So make sure you're smart and you know if you are in a flood prone area. A lot of you do know, but just, you know, be weather aware. As always, I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. If you want to help out this channel, check out the link down below. And yeah, number one thing, of course, as always, friends, please stay safe out there.